Welcome to Creswell Crags, home of prehistoric man, one of the most important sites in this country and indeed the world. We've got everything here, from Neanderthals through to modern humans, through to some amazing finds in the caves. And these are all available for people to come and look at and enjoy um, virtually every day of the year. So what can Creswell Crags offer to the visitor? We have cave tours, we have special exhibitions, we have special events, and we, we really make use of what is a fantastic landscape here, as well as a very modern visitor centre. There's no way we could do all of this by ourselves. We've got many, many partners, many organisations out there in the community, um, regionally and nationally, working with us. And one of those is Museum Development East Midlands. They've been particularly helpful with our Baltic Gem special exhibition last year, which looked at an amber pebble which had come all the way over to Creswell from the other side of the North Sea. So it had been carried across what was then known as Doggerland at a time when the British Isles, as they now are, were connected to continental Europe. So we had some tremendous support from MDEM at that point in time. More recently, they've been helping us with our audience development work. So that's looking at how we survey our existing visitors, how we find out where they've come from, what kind of things they like that we offer at the moment, and more importantly still, what they would like to see here in the future. We've got some exciting plans for Creswell Crags in the future here. In the very, very near future, we will be having an exhibition which is on loan from the Natural History Museum and that will include the skull from Swanscombe Man, so we're very excited by that. We're also working on an exhibition at Sheffield, Sheffield City Museums at Western Park, which will act as a big pointer to people to come and visit Creswell Crags from Sheffield. So those are two big projects we're working on at the moment. And of course we haven't forgotten the Heritage Awards for Museum Development East Midlands. By the time you see this, the applications will be in and Creswell will hopefully have an application among those. My name is Helen Martinez, I'm the Museum Service Manager at Erewash Museum. Uh, the museum is based in Orkeston and it's a social history museum telling the lives of people who've lived or worked in Erewash through the ages. We started the project back in 2013 um, and we'd just come up with our own Facebook page for the first time. Um, so we wanted to work with young people um, and get them engaged in helping us develop it um, because we were quite new to using social media as well. Um, so we found out about the MDEM programme um, and we applied to them for some funding because we wanted to pay bursaries to the young people for being involved. Um, so we put out an application um, and got two, two young people who advertised and wanted to be involved um, and then we worked with them through the process um, and they came up with lots of ideas and lots of ways that we could use Facebook um, to improve our marketing for events and also how we engage with our users. Um, so we worked with them over a period of about six weeks um, and they provided a lot of the content um, to improve our page and during that time our um, likes went up from about 100 to about 150 so we had quite a good increase during that six week period. But at the end of the project they did a celebration event where they presented their ideas and what they'd done to museum staff, friends of the museum um, and also the local press as well. Um, and they were trying to get the friends involved in the idea of social media and we hope that one day the friends will have their own website and Facebook page as well. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Museum Development East Midlands for giving us the funding for the project. It really enabled us to do something very valuable. Um, we've kind of gone on from strength to strength really with the social media side. Uh, we're currently in the Hayloft at the museum. This is going to be part of a massive HLF development which starts in the next few weeks. Um, and this room is going to become an education room and a learning suite. So we'll be moving on to do loads and loads of things with young people in the future. My name's Carolyn Melbourne, I'm Senior Heritage Assistant at the D.H. Lawrence Birthplace Museum and that's where we are at the moment. We're stood in the main bedroom, it's the room which we believe Lawrence was born in on the 11th of September 1885 uh, and we've been part of a project with Museum Development East Midlands to create uh, a multi-sensory resource box and this box uh, has been designed 
specifically for adults with learning disabilities, uh, but I do believe it will be of great use, great benefit for all different kinds of groups. Uh, and in it there's going to be all sorts of exciting goodies, so there's going to be um, artefacts, uh, mining snap tin, a miner's lamp, there's also going to be things that light up, things that smell, and there's going to be Adolf. And that's why I'm stood holding this uh, furry, furry rabbit at the moment. This is Adolf. Now Lawrence wrote uh, a short story about uh, Adolf, and it's one of his most accessible stories. It's about uh, the father who uh, he catches a wild rabbit and he brings it home for the children to keep as a pet. And they, they keep it in the house as a pet until it annoys the mother so much that they end up releasing it back into the wild. And it's a lovely story, as I say, it's the most accessible, it's very um, one that I think children could engage with really well. Uh, and it does give a softer portrayal of his father as well, for those of you who know anything about the way Lawrence depicted his father in his fiction. Um, it he's not, doesn't always come across as the most likeable character and I think Adolf gives a different perspective on that. So the next stage, looking to the future then, would be for us to develop that further and to create an easy read guide or an easy read version of the short story Adolf and that would enable anybody and everybody, children uh, as well as adults, to engage with that short story. So I'd just like to end on a big thank you to uh, MDEM uh, for their support and their funding. I think the, the resource box will be a wonderful uh, tool for us to uh, engage with our, our visitors even better um, and it, it really does make a, a massive difference. Um, people who wouldn't normally um, get very excited about coming to a museum do get excited if you can give them something tactile to do. So thank you. Thank you. My name is Paul Baker and I'm the manager of the Framework Knitters Museum in Ruddington, Nottinghamshire and these are the frames behind me. The museum's been here since the 1970s and we are Nottingham's only textile museum. We also focus on the Luddite riots which began here in Nottinghamshire and spread across the country. So we are both a social history museum and an industrial museum and most of all, we make textiles. We receive money from the Museum Development East Midlands to fund a community project working with a local school. We'd already received lottery funding to redevelop the site and we thought it'd be a really great opportunity to bring kids in from the community to help us develop it. So they were involved in everything from marketing to creating the interpretation. The biggest project they were involved in was the development of an interactive film in which the viewers get the opportunity to change the story at various points by making choices. So it was a very difficult script to write and the kids were really involved in every element, element of that. All of the consultants that we used on the project were employed to go into the school and help them uh, in the development of this uh, resource. So out of this the pupils managed to work with a number of professionals. They had an opportunity to work at the highest level at the development of something really fresh in a museum and we just opened the doors and said come along and, and, uh, and work with us. The key thing however is that we'd never worked with young people before so the funding from Museum Development East Midlands allowed us to gain the expertise in, in working with young people. We had one of their, um, one of their workers come and, and develop our skills in-house so now we can go ahead and work with young people in the future. So thanks to the Museum Development East Midlands, we've got this fantastic new revamped museum and we've got plans to go ahead and we've got a new site next door we're developing. So with more funding, we can work with more young people and they can be involved in that project as well. So give us some more money. Welcome to Hath Mill, a 200 year old brick tower mill built by John Griffin and worked by three successive generations of John Griffins. It was sold in 1877 to John Huff 
land steward at Culloden Hall and was last used commercially during the First World War. We are in the cap of Huff Mill, right at the top of the mill. Over here is the brake wheel, which is the huge 10 foot diameter wheel on the wind shaft that is turned by the sails. In 2014, the Trust installed this wallower and Museums Development East Midlands finance the cost of the seasoned oak. As a trust, we do bell pit simulations in which families act out what it would be like spending a day going 30 feet underground uh, in a bell pit 800 years ago. The Museum's Development East Midlands grant gave us the money to buy the wood so that our volunteers could make this winch which will make it a lot more realistic. One of the best things about the MDM programmes is that we've had a mentor who has been able to help guide us through the museum accreditation process. And as you can see here, we've produced all the spectrum procedures to help us with that. And we've had assistance with developing our plans and uh, policies etc and we're now in a situation where we are putting in our application to get the accreditation. Museums Development East Midlands have financed the construction of a new notice board like the one we already have on the Gorse Field as well as the shrubs and the bluebells that have been planted to make the site attractive so as to encourage people to visit and enjoy the heritage. We're still looking in the future. 90% of our visitors come when we're not open. So making sure that we have things such as our horse gin here makes a big difference. And we want to do a lot more things for visitors who come out of ours, as well as still developing the artefacts in the mill. The museum was uh, started in, in 2011 and it was a, a project to turn this wonderful old building into uh, a living museum that would have a blacksmith working, uh, involve the local community in the project. Um, we were all a grouping of volunteers that came together to actually deliver it. So uh, we've all come from different backgrounds, brought different skills to be able to make uh, what we have today. Uh, and part of that process was really Museum Development East Midlands who have supported us along the path. They've helped us in a number of ways. One which is uh, retail, space, and anal analysis and how to get our name out. Uh, another one is about accreditation and we became an accredited museum. And the, the final one is, is about bringing young people into the museum working with schools and how to maximise my our offering to those uh, children. Thank you Museum Development East Midlands, uh, you've been an inspiration to us. Uh, we have achieved incredible amount in the period of time and, and so a lot of it's down to you, big thank you. Uh, we're developing uh, and we want to get uh, involved more with young people, getting heritage crafts out into the community uh, we're also interested in our new ventures of 3D printing. 3D printing is, is a fantastic uh, process that we've, we've now, in, and that's now in our innovations area. We want to take that out into schools so that schools have an opportunity to get involved with uh, 3D printing and design and manufacture, uh, which I think is so important. Um, we also want to, to get the business proposition uh, worked at so that we can look at how to develop uh, a museum with an innovation area within it. What is it that the community wants? Uh, also what can we uh, make as a business to actually develop in the future? Hello, 
I'm Marilyn, I'm the Assistant Curator at the Spalding Gentleman Society. The museum itself has been founded for the last 300 years. It was founded in 1710 by Maurice Johnson, who is a local person from Spalding. We have a membership of 350 members. The society is still run as a learned society. We have a vast collection of books of over 1500, and the museum itself has still been added into on a daily basis nearly. The course I've been doing with the Museum Development East Midlands has been most useful, uh, besides getting the grants which we've been able to purchase um, conservation equipment like the museum vacuum cleaner, especially for cleaning the books, the old books we have in the society. We've been able to purchase other things like an emergency rescue kit and there have been also um, we're in the process of trying to buy a um, donation box um, which <laughs> fortunately nobody can walk off with and uh, we've been very, very fortunate in the help we've also received from people like Emma Chaplin who came to the museum and gave us, um, helped us with our volunteers on a special day we had with her. On behalf of the Spalding Gentleman Society, I would like to thank the Museum Development East Midlands for their support and for their generous grants in helping us purchase the items we have. This will help greatly in the conservation of our items and also help the museum go into the 21st century. Welcome to the Sir John Moore Foundation here in the heart of rural Leicestershire. Working with young people and education is the heart of the charity's purpose. Looking after the site, providing opportunities for the local community and most importantly making it sustainable is a key part of our role here. John Moore was a local lad, he was second son of the squire and he went off to London to make his fortune, becoming Lord Mayor in 1681. He made a fortune out of mining lead and gifted some of his wealth to this village for the education of young people. In 2013, a business vacated a small studio office, originally a gardener's bothy, which was converted to usable space during the 2004 restoration. The trustees saw the opportunity to utilise the space, which is now known as Guineas, to deliver across every single theme and complete an essential part of the master plan. Museum Development Programme, alongside other supporting funders, has helped this process, not just in the creation of Guineas itself, but in helping us to take a critical look at our heritage, focus on what our primary purpose is, and rethink what we can do to ensure the future success and sustainability. Guineas is jam-packed full of so many interactives. This programme enabled us to step back and critically think about the different aspects of our reason for being in digital, management, audience development and business planning terms. As often is the case, getting involved in these types of courses and activities is much more about other things, including getting away from the office, having time to think, meeting new and interesting people to bounce ideas off, experiencing new trainers and then pinching them, seeing how others have tackled problems and being inspired and supported to carry on. Without these, without these types of courses and programmes, we would lose much more than just a course. Thank you to Museum Development East Midlands. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Cottage, Cottage Museum, Museum Woodall Spa. Park. A few years ago, I came to the Cottage Museum and now I've seen a great improvement. Before, I was quite confused. Now, I can see all the facts I want to know about Woodall Spa, the amazing town that I live in. My favourite room is the War Room because it's got loads of interactive things like this and um, loads of good information about the both the walls. Hello, I'm Jill. Hello, I'm Jane. And we both work here at the Cottage Museum Woodall Spa. This building has been on this site since 1897 and it was the home of the Weald family. The most famous part of that family was the man named, known as John Weald and he was a prolific photographer. He's left us an archive of over 3,000 photographs, postcards and glass plate negatives that are all housed here in our archive, many of which are now on our walls and on our displays. We decided that we needed to provide something extra other than our little quizzes and things that we'd done before that would encourage the children and engage them with our wonderful new displays. 
So Jane came up with a brilliant idea, which was to have a guidebook which was created by young people for young people. What we wanted was to get them involved in the museum, not just to go round the museum with their parents. We wanted them to get involved, have something to look at, which would help them to interact with a lot of the exhibits in the museum. We had developed a donkey trail last summer for children, and this was from the school groups that we had. They came up with this idea. The children produced this booklet, um, Come and Explore the Cottage Museum. And from this, in the future, what we hope to do is to develop a di digital display for the children to help us with that. So we've started off with the paper products in the future. Hopefully we'll have the digital display. That is our plan. Thank you, MD, um, for funding our wonderful project. It's been so successful and it's made such a difference to all the visitor experience for the young people that come here. Um, because quite often families get involved as well, it's become a true family learning event. In the future, we've got all sorts of new ideas that we'd like to come up with. One of them has come from our young visitors today, our young people, and they would like us to run workshops to make one of these. Well, we were thinking that we should make, we should make pictures and put them in this little device which shows them in a 3D motion. I think it's a great idea and would love to have it in this museum. So if we run a workshop where we could make 3D pictures for you to put through the stereoscope, would you two be interested in coming to help? Definitely. Yeah? <laughs> Wonderful.